Welcome back, Chris Sakura, and I'm going to step you through exercise nine in Creo Parametric 6.0. Now, exercise nine has to deal with assemblies. Uh, we're just scraping the surface of what's called top down assembly modeling. Now, there's some debate from time to time. I've had people say that they didn't feel that this was necessarily uh, top down um, because there's a whole array of different things you can do with top down. Like, for example, there's something called skeleton modeling. We're not going to cover that in this particular exercise, but you will actually be able to kind of get the idea. We might discuss it a little bit. Um, this is generally a pretty advanced technique. That's why, again, I'm just scraping the surface. It's not, um, we're not going to be able to go into every little detail about top down modeling. But if you recall, if the exercise five, that was bottom up assembly modeling. That's building parts outside of the assembly and putting them in. So it could be like library parts, like screws, nuts, bolts, fasteners, things like that. And also things that you might build, common, commonly used parts and put them in. Now, top down is actually building the parts inside the assembly and using the context of other parts to develop it. So like bolt hole patterns could be matched up between different parts very easily. Geometry could be used from other parts. And that's what we're gonna do with this. You can see this is a pencil sharpener. And basically, we're going to build this uh, red cover first. And then once we're done with that part, we're going to build this clear uh, reservoir for the pencil sharp uh, shavings. And so we're going to go through how that works. Now, when we're done, we should be able to go in and make a modification to it like this. So we should be able to go into the original extrusion and edit the the actual distance here of two inches. Let's make it three, hit enter, middle click a couple times, and then finally hit regenerate. And both parts should update. See how that widened. So that's why, in my opinion at least, it's it is top down, because top down assembly modeling is that that's the power behind it, is actually being able to update parts, whether it be two parts or thousands of parts. You want them all to be able to update much of the time. There are times though that you don't want them to update if that those other parts are used in the context of other assemblies. Like if someone grabs those parts um, and they put it in a new assembly and then someone changes the original assembly, you don't want that to necessarily trickle down or hit the domino effect and mess up that other assembly. So there's checks and balances like P, uh, look into PDM or PLM, product lifecycle management systems to help you with that. They keep the, uh, you create a vault and basically, any time a part is checked out and used somewhere else or modified, it will relabel it like a, with a revision number, like or or code, you know, rev A B C D or one two three four, and so it doesn't mess up or tamper with the original file. So, uh, if you're going to do this top down, just be aware a PLM or PDM system might be a good thing to look at. And with Creo Windchill is their native product, and so um, take might want to look at how that works. We're not going to look at it in this class. Anyhow, let's take a look now how to build this. I'm going to start off with uh, an assembly and go ahead and label this E9, capital E9 for exercise nine. And if you're wondering where this information is, it's in the training guide. Um, you could actually just go to uh, V's and Victor, E-R-T-A-N as in Nancy, U-X-1.com and instructional manuals, and you should find it under the Creo Parametric 6.0. And this starts on page 90. All right, and there's not a whole lot here. There's just some very basic instructions and the drawings to create the front and back or rear part. Um, in doing this, I kept the parts super simple so that you could grasp the concept because typically in an introductory class, this type of thing isn't covered. You're probably going to end up with a lot of questions afterwards, which aren't going to be addressed in this exercise. But if you continue watching uh, the exercise, exercise 10 goes a little bit more detail. Extra, exercise 11, which is sheet metal, actually we go into top-down modeling with that too. So uh, there's more to come. Let's start now. We have our E9 assembly. We're going to go to create. And then right here it says create component. And we're looking at, uh, we're going to go ahead and label this E9 and then underscore front. Hit OK. 
And you do want to copy from existing, use the inch pound part, hit OK. Uh, that's the default, at least on mine. Now, instead of automatic here, go to default. And we learned about this both the, uh, or I should say in the exercise five some number of weeks ago. But now once you go to default, just go ahead and hit OK. Now I have my planes turned off. Let me turn them on so you can see this. What it did actually, the little planes are the, actually the part planes and the larger planes are the planes of the assembly. And by dropping it in like we did, it dropped them, uh, instead of uh, using that uh, default, it dropped them in to match front plane of my part matches up with the front plane of the assembly. It's a good strategy. Uh, larger companies to, uh, will typically use that strategy where they drop the parts in in a centralized part, then the origin is the same on all the parts. Not on most of them, at least. You'll usually find a hybrid of measures. Like, for example, uh, you're going to see some top down and some bottom up in assembly modeling. Not in this one. This is all top down. Okay, now what we need to do is edit the E9 front. And if you could remember to do this, to turn it on and off when you're editing specific parts, you're going to be fine. Uh, for this lesson. So E9 front, we want to edit that. So click on it and activate it. And now whatever changes we make are only on the part we're editing. And you can see it has that little green star there. And you can see the planes here. Now I'm going to hit the little arrow underneath the E9 front and you'll see it has its own right top and front planes. No surprise there, its own origin. And when you want to start a sketch, do you want to sketch on the planes of the assembly or the planes of the part? Or once we have other parts in there, do you want to sketch on surfaces of those other parts or planes from those other parts? You could do all those things. But my little piece of advice here is try and keep them all in the original part when you can. Uh, because imagine those are like spider webs attaching to different parts. And if you use that part, that has all these links back to other parts later on. Remember I told you about the domino effect. If you change one, it might adversely affect this part. So just be aware, my suggestion is when you can, try and limit those and only use them when you need them. Like for example, you'll see when we steal information from one part to another, so we don't have to redraw everything. And if we want it to link, so it does update. All right, so now we're sketch, uh, we've actually edited the part. Let's go ahead and select the front plane and go to extrude, go to the center rectangle tool here, center rectangle, and right at the origin, click and drag on a rectangle. Make sure there's no equal or perpendicular links. And I actually did get perpendicular, so I'm gonna delete those. I'm gonna click on and hit delete. And that's because we're gonna change the width of this from three and leave the, the height only two inches later on. If we, um, so anyhow, let's go ahead and change this dimension here to two and the next dimension, change it to two. And you could hit the refit or if you've been following along, the F key on the keyboard, which we set up on day one. Or it might have been actually a day two, can't remember. Might be an exercise two, actually. All right, I'm going to refit that. I'm going to turn off my planes. I don't really need to see them, nor do you right now. Okay, let's get those in there a little bit better. You feel free to hit refit once you get it squeezed down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. The extrusion for this is on that drawing in the training guide and the extrusion depth, let me bring it up here, is actually gonna be one inch and hit okay. All right, now on that front face, select that face, go to extrude. We're gonna put the, the center boss. So go ahead and select the circle tool, drag out the circle. And this is going to be 1.25. Go to extrude. And it's only going to be a half inch. Hit OK. Select the front of that face. Go to extrude. Now we're going to put in the inlet for the pencil. This is going to be big. It's a half inch. So it's those like uh, pencils for toddlers or kindergartners. So 0.5. Hit OK flip that direction and have it go through all. Make sure remove material automatically, de automatically default in a mine. Just make sure it does on yours. Hit okay. And let's put some rounds on. So go to the rounds and set the rounds to 0.125. 
select these four corners. Now you're not going to want to round the back edge because we need that edge sharp for later. There's not going to be any round on there. Okay, uh, select this edge here, this edge here, and then select these four edges here, here, and there, and there. Again, do not fillet anything on the back edge. If you have something filleted, hold Control and deselect it. Okay, the last one here, click on this edge. Let's drag this out to 0.25. Uh, there we go. And hit OK. Click off the part once you hit OK. Let's flip it around. Go to uh, select this face, go to Shell, and set the wall thickness to 0.1. Hit OK. Now I'm going to show you something new. Nothing really we've done here is new with the exception of we're actually making this part inside an assembly. But here's something that might be interesting to you. Uh, another way to make a thin wall, we need to make a little lip around here that's half the thickness. So it's going to be 50,000 thick. It's going to go about 0.25. So select this face. Go to Extrude. Doesn't seem like anything new, but let's now go to Offset. And we're going to go with Loop. Select this face. And hit Next until we see either the inner edge or the outer edge. And now the colors here are a little challenging to see, but a mine, if you have your settings the same as mine, it's a lighter blue thin line. It's really hard to detect almost. Um, if you get yours wrong, just cancel out and try again. But you can see the inner edges turn dark blue as you scroll through them using the next. Now mine is a lighter blue, I can barely tell, but let's go ahead and hit accept. And there we go. And if this doesn't turn out right, then don't worry. If it's the inside edge, you're still okay. You can leave it as is. Now, here's the thing. If it's the outside edge like mine, I see the arrows pointing outward. So for the offset, we actually want it to go inward. So remember, we put a negative. So put a minus and then 0 0.05. Those of you who have it flipped inward, it's just a positive 0 0.05. You don't actually have to put a plus symbol, obviously, in front of it. Those of you who have the inner edge, you might have to flip flop it. It might have to be minus 0 0.05 if it's on the inside edge and arrows pointing uh, out. So, okay, hit the green check mark, and there's our geometry. It should be right in the center there. It's not, it turns out in orange. You could hit OK, and it's going to immediately try and extrude this. This only goes 0 0.25, though. 0 0.25. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not hollowed out yet. Here's the trick that I was going to show you. Go to thin or thicken sketch. And you'll see now it made a lip, but don't apply it yet. Click up here or down here where it's 0.027 and type in 0 0.05 and hit enter. Now make sure that this is all gray, it just goes through. And if you have to, you can flip it. See if I flip it, now it's on the outside. That's not what we want though. But there we go, hit OK. All right, one last thing. Let's go ahead and color this a little bit. So go to View, and you can make it any color. I'm going to make mine red. Just going to click on red here. And instead of all, I'm going to go to Part, select the part, middle click, and there we go. OK, so that's done. Now, this is where you have to remember, you have to exit out of that because we're done with it for right now. We actually will go back to it and make some modifications, but um, we've got to get rid of that green star. And the way you do it is you just edit the assembly. So go to the top where it says E9 ASM, go to the green star, which is activate. All right, green stars should all be gone now. Hit the little arrow to the left of E9 front, bring that information up. We don't need to see it for right now. All right, now we want to start building the next part on this little edge right here, uh, which um, uh, there, right there. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Go to create. And this one you're gonna label E9 underscore rear. Hit okay. And right here, just hit okay, should go with the default. Now again, instead of automatic, go with default. Hit okay. And it just so happens that back face was where we started. So that's why I went ahead and went with default. Okay, and I see actually I I made an error. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and fix this. And I probably led you all to have the same error. See that like double edge there. We 
can fix that in a little bit. But let's get this, let's get our part done first. So um, this is good. You can see what happens in real world when you make mistakes. So, okay, so let's go to, um, let's see here, select this face right here. If you can, if not, go right to sketch and unselect it, or actually go to extrude. All right now, we want the outer edges there, so we're going to go over here to um, project. We just want the outer edges to be exactly the same. So now go to loop, select this face right here, and hit next again until the outside edge highlights in that blue. There we go. It's almost impossible to see, but um, I got it. I'm going to uh, even when I rotate, I can't see it. I'm going to hit accept and it should turn orange on the outside there. The other thing you can do rather than using loops is just go to single or chain and just select the outer edges. That might actually be easier than having to scroll through all those different things. I just like to get it all in one shot and I've been doing this for years, so I could kind of see those edges a little bit better than many of you who are still novices. So my apologies for that. Okay, hit OK. And now we're going to go ahead and flip this direction. So we want to um, reverse. And I see here it's like stuck on remove material. And this is what happens when you do things wrong. Now, you might remember we dropped an E9 rear, and this is, again, my fault, but it's a good learning experience right now because this is so common. Even I, who I've been using this software since 1995, um, can do this mistake. Take a look, the E9 rear, that's the part where you should be editing. What should it have besides this little block? Remember the activate? Forgot to activate it. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, great learning experience though. So I'm gonna hit cancel. Do you really wanna cancel? Hit yes. All right, now, first of all, since we screwed this up here, we could fix that now. Now, only if yours is screwed up, fix what I'm about to fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna edit the E9 front because of that mistake. So I've been making, I made two mistakes today, not a good day. All right, go to activate. So we're, active, we're editing the front. Now, what we're gonna do is hit the little arrow to the uh, left of it, and that extrude is what we need to fix. So I'm gonna click on that extrude and go to the gold ball with the pencil on it. Now, what we can do here is, let's see, um, hit this little change direction button again, and look at that. It has actually a middle area there. Okay, and that's what happened when I didn't click on it the second time. I wasn't expecting that to happen. But now I clicked on it again, and it should be all the way through. All right, and I thought I'd actually check that, but that's all right. Uh, somewhere I made a mistake. Now I hit okay. Look at that, nice and smooth. One solid wall right here. Okay, so one down, one more to go. Now, so turn off activate by going to the E9 assembly and activate the assembly so we're not we're not editing the part any longer. Now, bring all that information up. We don't need to see the E9 uh, front anymore. Click on the E9 rear, and this is what we missed before. Go to activate. Now, notice that the part that's there, that the E9 front, which we're not editing, turns transparent. This is a courtesy that Creo does so that you know whatever part you're not working on will be grayed out like that. The part that you're working on though will be actually opaque, whereas this is transparent. So that's that helps with um, working in, with large assemblies. Also, it helps you see through them too. Okay, so we're, we're on the E9 rear. Let's go ahead and we'll actually work off of this face. Click on that face right there, go to extrude, now remember, if you were unable to click on that face, go to extrude first, then select the face. That might be easier. Now we're gonna choose a different way. We're gonna project those edges, but let's go with project. Let's go with chain this time instead of loop because it was kind of hard to see that preview. To chain, we want the outer edge, click here, and then the next one. 
And my hope was it was going to go around, but let's see. I'm going to hit next. There it goes. Okay, so once I hit next, I followed it around. We see the green. We could just accept that. Okay, endpoints of the chain are not coincident. Do you want to convert to loop? Yeah. All right, look at that. We've got it. Now hit OK. And now we see a solid. Notice it's it's opaque. All right, change that to 1.5, hit enter, and hit OK. All right, now we want to round this off so it could be held in a person's hand while they sharpen the pencil. So let's go to the round tool, set the round to 0.5, select this edge right here. And you really get a good look at the capability of uh, the granite one. That's the uh, the core modeler here and its uh, ability to round that. That's pretty complex, what it just did there. Hit OK. All right, flip it around to the front. And see, this is what I was talking about. The parts that you're not editing are transparent. So you can't really do anything to them except see them and steal edges off of them. What we're going to do here, we're going to shell out our part. Now remember, it's 50 thousandths. In real life, it would actually have like maybe shell the part out at point oh four five, like leave five thousandths play in there. Um, we're going to go with just 50 thousandths for the shell. So go to shell, make sure you put a point oh five. Go ahead and select the face. All right. Now we have that shell out. We see the preview. Beautiful preview. Go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to select. Now I'm going to turn on my planes just to show you this. You don't have to turn your planes on. But we want to create little bosses, uh, little clipping mechanisms that hold this together. So since we're editing this part, we could start the clip on this part and then finish it on the other part. Now they're going to be centered. And if we look at the print, let's bring that back. You can actually see them here. Let me zoom up and actually I'll rotate. Look over here. There they are. See, so it's 0.25. There's one on either side. Pick this up here so we can see a little bit better. And my scroll bar for some reason to the Right is not appearing. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. There you can see these little bosses. Let's zoom up a little closer. There, now it's 0.025 radius, and it's going to be 0.125 off this edge. So um, if we actually just locate it off the center, we should be able to get that. So let's go ahead and select the little arrow to the left of E9 rear, and let's select the right plane. Go to extrude. It's going to bring us to this view orientation, which is fine. Go to, uh, let's see here, hidden line so we can see inside. All right, now here's that intersection. Go to the circle tool and find the midpoint. That's, believe it or not, that's exactly where we want it. Click and drag out a small circle, dimension it. Remember, it was 0.025 radius, so it's diameter we're really drawing here. So it's 50,000, so 0.05. Now we want to get it to the bottom side too. Before I rotate it, I should have uh, thought about that, but that's okay. Let's go over here to the view orientations, go to right, and let's draw a center line right in the middle there and horizontal click. Now select that circle, go to mirror and select that horizontal center line. Now it's down below at the bottom. Now if that one updates, this one will update too. Let me go back to shaded with edges. All right, here we can see our preview, but let's set this to 0.25 and then set it to mid-plane. Hit OK. All right, so we've got it on the top and bottom, but notice there's no cutout on the front part yet, so we have to build that next. So let's practice our little thing here. Let's uh, hit the little arrow to the left of E9 rear. Click on E9 assembly and activate the assembly first, thus deactivating the rear part. Now click on the E9 front and activate the E9 front. And let's go to hit the little arrow to the left of that, go to the right plane of that part, 
go to extrude and let's take a look at what we got here. All right, we're going to have to go back to shaded with, or I should say, uh, hidden lines. And there we have that. Let's go and we're going to go to offset, keep it at single, select that edge. And my arrow is pointing out so I can put in, I don't have to put a, a minus in. I just put in 0 0.005. So I'm putting in the offset. Okay. Now what I've discovered, you can't do both, at least unless I tried. Maybe let's, it might work, but that's too late. It's all right. Now do this one too. 0 0.005. Now don't forget you have to go to the line tool and draw a line between these two. Now what we just did, middle click to end the chain, get this one up here, click here to here, middle click to end the chain, and they should shade. Let's go back to shade it with edges. And now we can hit OK. And it's going to go remove. All right, we do want it to remove. Look at that cutout there. That's perfect. But it's going to be, instead of um, 0.25, it'll be 0.26. So divide it up, it's 5 thousandths of an inch clearance. Now you're probably wondering, like, why am I inconsistent? Sometimes I use clearance, sometimes I don't. On easy areas like this where I could actually show it to you, it's fine. Sometimes building it too much of it into these lessons confuses students. It adds too many steps. And so that's why you should always build clearance in. You could get away with it sometimes with plastics. Remember, metals, you can never get away with it. You always have to make clearances. All right, of the parts when they intersect. Okay, so here we're going to go to mid-plane. And we can see our cutout right there. Hit OK. And look at that. Let's turn off plane display. And now we could actually see the geometry. Now for that little triangle button, if you want, again, just have a little fun with this. My students, you guys out there, dress it up. I love to see when you add things to it. Make it look special. Um, the parts are very basic initially, and the reason for that is because I, I want to keep it Simple so you can understand just what the lessons are, not, not put in too much information in it that uh, might overload the lesson a bit. But here, select this face, go to extrude, go to the center line, and you don't have to do this if you want. Let's just, I'm just having a little fun. Click, add that little center line horizontal, and then go to the line tool and click here, right about there, and connect. Middle click two times. Now select that, go to mirror, select the horizontal center line, and now we have a nice little triangle. So that would be like if someone wanted to push it down, I hit OK. I'm going to actually set it to 0 0.02, and I'm going to flip the direction. It should automatically default to remove material. You can turn that off once you get used to it. I leave it on just so you all know what's going on and so it looks like mine. Go ahead and hit OK, and now we have that little cutout there. So a little for your thumb, when you, you're pulling apart, you know to squeeze that and pull that out so that the mechanism is deactivated. Now, if you want to get that to the bottom, we could select that feature, go to mirror, select the top plane, and you'll see a little preview right there. Hit OK. All right. Let's now, we're done. Let's go to E9 assembly, deactivate it. And now what we want to do is um, let's bring up this information here and let's actually color that to clear. So right here in appearances, hit the little arrow and find the PTC glass. And you can select that model and just middle click and now it's transparent. And if you want to make a photo rendering, we all know already you can turn on perspective and you could go to um, applications and click on Render Studio. Not everyone has this. Some of you who are working at companies, your the company you work for may not have procured it. So just be aware. All right. And there's the photo rendering. I'm going to close that. Just one. Most of you have seen me do that a dozen times. So those of you who might not have, there you go. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off perspective view. Now we want to test this to see if we could widen it. So here's what you do. Hit the little arrow next to E9 front, hit the little arrow next to the extrude and find that section. And this is extrude one now. Click on edit dimensions. The dimensions should appear for that. Double click on this. Two, change it to three. 
hit enter. Now it doesn't automatically just update. You have to go to file, I'm uh, sorry, model. Click on the model tab and hit regenerate. And there it is. And so that gives you an idea of the capability of top-down modeling. Anything you tie to another model, whenever that model, the original model changes, the other parts will update, which gives you an incredible amount of power and capability. Imagine if you had a thousand parts attached to one part and you need them all to update, like bolt hole patterns and things like that. Normally in old CAD systems, you'd have to go through each and every part and update them, like actually change the model. Here, all of them are affected, which can be a good thing. And it could be not such a good thing at times too. And then we talked about that earlier, where maybe you didn't want those all to update. So there's different variables, which we can't get into in this introductory class, but um, that pretty much completes that. Now the lab for this is to make the drawing that you see here. Let me zoom out. So, it, and it's, so basically it's just review to make it like we're going to make a front, a top, a section view, detail view, uh, exploded isometric, put the labels and the build material on there. All right, let's change this back. Now we could try hit and undo. Let's see what undo does. And hit regenerate. It worked. Okay, so undo is kind of nice too from time to time. Otherwise you could have gone back and edited that sketch. Let's make the drawing now. So we're going to go to file new drawing. We'll use the drawing file name, hit OK. Empty with format, browse, select the A format, hit open and hit OK. All right, let's go to general, hit OK. Click over here. Here is the um, isometric view. That looks pretty good. We could go ahead. We'll leave it actually like that. Oh, you know, we could try it. Let's see if the auto explode does a decent job here. Sometimes with top down modeling, it doesn't always uh, bottom up. It usually does a pretty decent job depending upon how you made it. But let's go to uh, view states. Let's try to explode and apply. Okay. And see, it didn't work, but here, watch this customize explode state. And we could uh, translate and motion reference. Let's see here, along an edge, that should work. And so we'll select like this edge. And then now we click on the part, just move it forward and hit OK and OK. And so we exploded it right here. Now you'll see we can't move it. Don't forget, you have to unlock the view up here. Now click on it and you could locate it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and drop in the other view. So let's go to uh, general view, hit OK, click right here. We're going to go ahead and maybe make this a bit smaller. Let's see the scale. It's actually one to one scale. Let's see if we can, mm, it's going to be really tight. We better not just try and squeeze it. So let's go to custom scale. Let's go to um, three quarter. Okay or 0.75, whatever you want to put in. All right, now let's go to view states. Uh, we don't need that. View display. We want no hidden. And I usually like to go phantom on here. And then the view type, double click on front. Hit apply and OK. Right. Now the scale, if you want to use that, you could put the scale down there. So just rather than typing it in. All right. Um, okay. Now let's unfold some views from there. Click on that. Go to projected. Click up here. Now let's click on this and we're going to turn on our plane display. Remember when we want a section view? So we got planes on. We're going to go to projection again. Click over here. And now we double click on that view. And you go to uh, sections, 2D cross section, plus symbol, done. Now type in capital A for section A. Hit the green check. Now we get to select that plane right in the middle and hit apply. And you should get this. Now make sure you select that plane. Remember, um, if you, you can make multiple section views, but 
Um, also, here in the view display, I'm going to go with uh, no hidden and phantom again. All right, I'm going to turn off the planes. Don't forget to turn off the planes. They will print out. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and move that over too. Now we want a detail view. See, there's our little, yeah, you can even see the clearance in there. Uh, let's go to, first of all, I'll select that view, go find detail view right in that little area there. Now 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I'm sorry, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, middle click, and then left click up here to drop that and straighten this out a little bit. Okay, odd. Uh, I seem to have lost my Explorer view there. Let's double click on that. Let's see what happened. View state. I must not have applied it. Let's try that again. Okay, so um, first go to Entity or Edge. We want it to go along that edge. I'll click in here, click on that part, drag it forward. Okay. Done. Maybe I just hit OK. So make sure you hit Done. Hit OK. All right. Not sure why that did that. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't usually explode it from there. I usually explode it from the uh, actual model, which we saw a few weeks ago in the midterm. So if you need to see how that's done, watch the midterm review. You'll see how it's done. OK. Um, we could maybe. Uh, we'll leave that as is. OK. Now let's go to let's see what else is on that drawing. We have some inspection dimensions. Uh, oh, the section view arrows, can't forget that. So click on arrows, select this view, then this view, and there they are. And if you want, click on it. Oh, let me undo that. Let me click two times. Did not need that one. All right. All I was trying to do here was get this down a little bit because we're running short on space. All right, now the, um, we could go over here to annotate, go to dimension. We could use the dimensions in the model, but these are just like an inspection dimension. So I'm going to select this edge. And then remember, you have to hold control, select the other edge, and bring that down right here, middle click. And then let's get this out of the way. Right. And we'll add one more for this one. Click here, hold control, select this bottom edge, and then move it over, release control, middle click right there. And again, we can make a little bit more room. Once we middle click a couple times, we could then move these over. Let's get that over here. And then just don't forget your name. Oh, and this one too. Let's not leave it shaded. <clears throat> and then note. Little click. Oh, the balloons. Um, another thing that would be under annotate. Under here, under annotations, you'll find some additional options. Balloon note. And with leader. And let's go ahead, make note, select that edge, middle click, type in. That one will be one. Actually, that'll be two because that's the second part. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. Hit the green check mark twice. Let's hit make note, select that edge, middle click. And this will be part one. Hit the green check twice, done. Now the bill of materials. Um, I still have to update my bill of materials, so um, it's not functioning right now, the, the automatic one. So I'm just going to show you how to put it in manually. Again, remember over here we have table, and we only have two parts, so we need three columns and three horizontal there. Click over here to drop that there. And now you can put in, so this will be um, part number, name, and quantity. 
our number will be one oops front and quantity one. And then this next one will be part two. Uh, come on, rear. And then one. All right, then we just have to move this out of the way. Maybe here, let's get back to layout. And we could click on this, move that down a little bit so it's not interfering. Could probably squeeze them down even more. But there you go. That's again just good practice for making a drawing. Again, that's your lab. And when you send this to me, just go to file. Uh, you don't have to send me a picture of the assembly once you do this. The lab, this image alone, those of you who are in my class doing this from home, this, this is all I need because it shows me that you did the part and you did the lab. So exercise and lab. And remember, you just go over here, save as, quick export PDF. And there it is. Just save it, print it out, or save it, whatever. Okay, and that concludes this exercise.